Hello again and welcome back to the Glasgow South Morrow Tram and Rail Group Workshops. It won't belong to Morrow Rail Scotland in 2023 and as you know <coughs> the club is doing a, a modelling bench, in fact it's three modelling benches and we'll be doing various different projects over the weekend. Uh, one of them I'll be doing the uh, scale scenes uh, fire station. I've got the all the files right here. I think I've shown you this before. I've got all the files and all the instructions for it. And I also purchased the the base layers. You know, normally you cut them out yourself, but. It takes a long time to cut through 2mm card and it's better if you can, if you buy the, they're, they're, they're not cheap but if you buy the, the base layers already laser cut, all you do is release them from the, from the fret and uh, you save an awful lot of time cutting out 2mm card because it's just wee tabs that's left in and also you save a fortune and blades because uh, cutting these blades, cutting these kits out, blades don't stay sharp very long and so I, I, I chose to go with uh, the laser cut ones, I think it was about, I think it was about 24 pounds for the, for, for, for the, the laser cut base layers, that gives you everything, uh, you can stick your cover layers onto it, you, you've still got to purchase a kit. It does make it, it does make it more expensive, I'll, I'll grant you that, but, but that's that's neither here nor there, it's, it saves time. And especially if you're doing this at a show, uh, <coughs> we find when we do a, when we do a modelling bench, we don't actually get much done, because you the public love to talk and we just love that as well and uh, we spend more time talking to you explaining how we do things and also um, how these kits and whatever we're doing goes together we're there we're really there to entertain you we're there to help you in your modern railway hobby so what are we doing today? Well, a while ago, if you remember, I said we would do a workshop on ballasting. And I hear a lot of you cringing at this, the, 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 the thought of ballasting a layout. Um, and I hope this workshop about ballasting I hope it can make it a bit easier, especially when you come to points and crossings because that's where things can go wrong. Get the ballast into the wrong place where you don't want it and the glue and you can have problems freeing them off again. So I'm going to show you how we do it and I'm, I emphasise this because others will say, oh no, no, that's not the way you do it, it's the way we do it. And for the newcomers coming into the hobby, if I can make it a bit easier for you, well, it's there in a plate. So, without further ado, I'm going to get the camera set up and we'll get started. Catch you later. Okay folks, here we are now. Now, this is the point where we, that we're going to be um, ballasting. The crucial parts is there. You don't want to get any ballast, I've got a pencil to keep my hands out of the way. You don't want any ballast to get in at that tie bar so that this and these blades, so you cover that with blue tack from there right over to here. Uh, just to make sure that there's no ballast 
it's in there. Now the other bit, which I don't know if it's you meant to see if it's on the camera. Oh yes it is I think. It's that bit there. Uh, where you've got the frog, the groove, both ways coming in to where the narrowest bit is. You want to make sure no ballast gets in there either. And you've got a wee plastic check rail there with a groove where the wheel flanges go through. You cover that, that and that all with blue tack um, so that it doesn't cause any problems. I'll let you see him uh, doing it. This is my second time of doing this because I made a muck up with the first one so just bear with me. Um, just I had this blue tack all warmed up so it was nice and pliable but it's kind of went the other way again. So as you can see you put the blue tack right in there make sure you get it in the inside of the rails And you'll notice that there's a gap there. See, you want to make sure that gets sealed as well. Um, I'm trying to make it so you can. I don't want to block it for me, but I might have to for a wee minute. See the frog as well, and maybe try and adjust the camera a wee bit. Go in a wee bit if I can. And just there again. Sausage shape, and then just press it in. There we are, and another two wee bits rolled into a sausage shape for the two check rails. Just this beam so that it concentrates in the one bit. No, do that. Real. And that's it. That's all you want to do. Just three bits plus the, the actual tie bar. The rest of it should be okay. Uh, so there you are, that's it. Once it's been ballasted which this one has, uh, this was the one I did yesterday, once it's been ballasted you just pull the blue tack back out I did 
did this bit of thing yesterday, this bit of workshop yesterday, but the only thing is when I played it back there was no sound, so that's why I've redone it, just to keep it all complete. I forgot to switch the microphone on folks. I remember what I had. Or an elephant even, because it's got nothing to remember. There we are, that's it. And then we take the tie bar off. And there you are, you're left with a point ready for service. Um, so, that's what we're going to do. Uh, I did say I was going to do uh, another workshop on ballasting, but it was going to be the, the three-way point, which we've got one in the steam depot, so, or actually the motor power depot, because you can be steam uh, diesel trains in there as well. So uh, it's a wee bit more intricate. Um, as a matter of fact, I'd like to see it, just to see, see there we are, folks, we've got the, the three-way point now. Uh, the three way point you've got two tie bars to cover which is quite a big area but you've also got a frog there you've got a frog there and you've got a frog here and then you've got one two three four check rails oh, sorry sorry folks I'm blocking the view again you get one, two, three, four check rails to do. Um, but uh, the principle's the same. The principle is the exact same. Uh, no matter whether it's a double slip, uh, as long as you do the frogs, in which case you get three, of course, two tie bars. Um, which means you would cover from there, just in front of the pin, right over into the over here, I would think. Um, so there should be no ballast in there at all. Uh, well, I'll maybe do that workshop uh, after the show, and that way you'll have that wee bit of info as well. Okay, bye for now. Folks, here we are again, and uh, we've got the, the blue tack on the two check rails and the frog. If the blue tack happens to be cold, if it's been in a drawer somewhere, you may have to uh, work it in your hands, your warm hands, to soften it so that it's pliable. Uh, not difficult to do, and you just work it in till you get what you, what you want, as long as the whole area is covered. That should be fine. Now the tie bar, I'll let you see. There we are, the tie bar. Totally covered. Even the blades on both sides are covered, so there's no way that you're going to get any ballast, glue, or any other area in, or any other foreign body in there. And that will that's going to save you an awful lot of time. Because you know, and you do this procedure with every point on your layout, whether it's a, a Y, whether it's a three way, left, right hand, you do it with them all, even double slips. Double slips, um, even more intricate, obviously. And as well as that, the three way point um, is rather intricate as well. I'll maybe do a separate one on it just to let you see what's involved in it. But this is the, 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 the this point leads into our steam depot uh, or our motor power depot because you could get diesels in there. It comes off the main line. Uh, I see there's a wee bit of. That's better. Uh, once it's all ballasted and the glue's dry, then these come off. Don't forget, don't forget to take them off. And uh, obviously, blue tack being soft, it, c it can be reused. So there we are, folks. That's the the instrument. I'm going to show you how to how to do the ballast in itself. Um, fairly, fairly easy. It's it's not a difficult task. But uh, I'll show you. The one thing you must make sure is that you get no glue or 
ballast on the inside of the rails. Uh, make sure the the, the <coughs> excuse me. Make sure that the ballast is below sleeper level, or just level with the top of it. Uh, level with the top of it is probably better. Now, as you can see from this, um, better make sure you can see it first of all. And you can, but if you look carefully, this bit of the point has already been ballasted. So it's just this wee bit here, and even the even the toe of the point has already been ballasted at a prior time. So we don't have to bother with that. So once again, I'll be back shortly. Once I get it set up. Okay folks, here we are back again. Now the the key to this is the spreading of the ballast and the best way I find is using one of these salt containers. Now I don't know if you get these anymore, I haven't seen them for a while. But on the top of it you've got a, a sprinkle and you've got a a big broad uh, exit see it there, but then you've got this kind of spout thing. If you turn that round like that, you've got a fairly big control over how much ballast comes out of there, and that's what you want. Uh, I've got another one here. It's not got the spout, but you can get you can get it fairly accurate when we're using that side of it. And that's a different colour ballast that I'm going to use. So we'll put that one aside. Oops, sorry. Right guys, see we are now. Now, I'm using a ballast called Fine Cinders. And I just let so much of it out. And then we get a paintbrush. I've got a hot one there. and we just work it down through the sleepers trying to keep the light on it so you can see what I'm doing Remember keeping the, the ballast away from the inside of the track. Even on the outside of the track just
as you can see it's getting into the inside of the, the blue tack now so I'm going to try and get it out of there get it down to the basic level of the sleeper Again, watch, watch round about the tie bar to make sure that no ballast gets in there. Make sure that if there is any ballast, you get it out. Now, um, the tie bar itself um, should be okay. It's just to really you got to you, you got to make sure that it is level with the sleepers because it makes it easier so the trains don't foul on the inside of the rails if this bar is stuck in there. So there we are, that's just one wee bit done and this is what, the, this is the way to do it, um, don't rush it, don't rush it, do a wee bit at a time, don't try and do a whole layout at a time, you're going to get bogged down, just a wee bit at a time and these are, I always find these salt containers are good uh, for doing this job. Once you're by the point, you'll find it should actually be easier. One uh, person was asking me a wee while ago that was there ever a case where there was ballast of two different colours and I said yes but I saw a, uh, they were rebuilding, uh, remodeling a junction uh, just up the road for us and I videoed it and when the modded wagons came forward to be unloaded you know, there was a guy with a kind of hipster belt on and he just pressed a button and the wagon tipped it up. Well the ballast in these wagons was a mixture of grey and red ballast. So it just depends where they were getting the, the ballast from.
from there we have it. Um, the next stage is to get the glue, and once I've done that, I'm get it all mixed up on my bag. Okay, guys, we're back again now. What I've done is I've used one of these uh, sprayers. If you can see that. A bit. One of these sprayers that gives a very fine spray. Now the reason we do this is because we just use water to dampen the ballast so that when the mix the 50-50 mixture of PVA and glue uh, it helps it to seep into the to, to the mixture uh, to the to the ballast. Uh, you also put one one drop of you call it, one drop of fairy liquid in a monster mixture to, to just to give it um, again it helps it sink in to to the ballast. It doesn't sit on top; it goes through. It helps the capillary action if the if, the, if you like. So we've given it a wee spray of the water. So we'll get the the glue and the mixture mixed up. Okay folks, here we are. Now you can see here that I've done this start bit. I've got the mixture roughly about right, I think, for the glue. So we'll just continue with that. Just a wee drip feed. Just remember that <coughs> when you're doing these bits, you will have to scrape the inside of the rails. I said to keep the ballast away from there, but the, the glue can still get in there, so you probably have to scrape some of the glue away. As you can see, the, the, the glues disappear into the ballast, which is what you want. And we went up to here. Just watch. Uh, I saw somewhere that if you put too much of the washing up liquid in it, if it's the green stuff you're using, which in my case it was, if you put too much in it, it can stay green. But this doesn't seem to be doing that, so that should be fine. I have also heard. 
of uh, guys or girls even for that matter putting IPA in it uh, we don't do that we just we just put the glue and the water and up liquid as well never had any bother with it You can see probably on here that there's quite a wee bit of the ballast isn't up to the top of the sleepers. That's fine. As long as it's not over the top of the sleepers, that's that should be okay. There we are, it's the ballast is uh, the glue is sinking in, it takes a wee while sometimes, but it's not a difficult challenge once you see how it's done. The crucial bit of course when doing this uh, is as I've said before that point uh, when you've got these these uh, blue tack that stops a lot of the problems you can have um, 
I'm not saying other folk don't use that method, but I've never actually seen it on anybody else. Uh, any else's setup. I've never seen them doing ballasting with the blue tank in place. I think it's the easiest method you can get. Um, so now that we've done that, uh, that's that's really the end of the workshop. So folks, I'm sorry it's taken so long to do this uh, workshop. I've always been, I said ages ago that I would do it and I never actually, I just never managed to get around to it. But I says, I'm going to make the effort this week, just coming up to Monorail, give you a bit of bonus of a workshop that uh, you can try out. If you're coming to Monorail Scotland, come and see us, tell me if that's helped you. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Um, I can't do any more with that until that glue dries, maybe take a couple, as long as it takes a couple of days, and especially in here when there's no heating during the day, unless one of us, one of us is in. Uh, I just had a young, uh, an elderly chap in there called Paul, who, he was going into the town with his wife I think, and uh, we had a wee chat, and who knows, he, he, he may come along and see us on Monday, I don't know. But he just stays in the housing complex across the road. We had a guy, John, John, from there, and uh, I don't know what happened with John. He just didn't seem to want to carry on. <coughs> and Paul knows him, so we'll just see what happens there. So, from Andy Russell, keep on shooting, keep on modelling, and may God bless you. Please. Who sort it? See it? See it? Sort it.